This is an unedited recording of the full meeting. Public comments are held at the end of the meeting. Thank you for watching. Please hit the like button and leave a comment. It really helps the algorithm. If you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell to get all the upcoming videos from our channel. Thank you and enjoy the video. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, please remain standing for a moment of silence in honor of Veterans Day. Please take your seats. Roll call, please. Eister. Here. Savage. Here. Grotius. Here. Barnhart. Here. Oh, Martina. Is there any public comment on agenda items at this time? Mr. Bob? I mean, will please state your name, sir? <laughs> Alan Bob, and I work at the cemetery breaking leave this past Wednesday down in the southern end of it. And I was kind of shocked at the way that looks down there. There is a tree line down there, brush apparently from the cemetery has been just thrown against that, covering some tombstones down there. You need to get a chipper down there and a crew to go after that brush and clean it out. That would be a start. Some other suggestions I have is put a fence around the cemetery with a portal for entrance at the corner of uh, South Fort and Bruce Street. That could probably be done by the metalworking students at SunTech, uh, you know, mm -hmm. be a project for them. But there needs to be more pride taken in that cemetery than what it now exhibits. There's another tombstone. There are a tree on either side of it. You cannot hardly see the tombstone because of those trees. The trees need to be either cut down or uh, the, limb, the lower limbs hacked off so you can see the tombstone. It's a fair size tombstone. And a lot of those uh, I don't know what they call them, but the, the lower stones that are just the markers. Yeah, the yeah. markers. A lot of them need some attention. So on. There's one I saw where there's a depression, so I assume the coffin would be underneath it, and it's probably, yeah, something. Yeah. So I know that's happened up at Coffin Manor because I worked up there. So it really needs a lot of attention down the southern end, and I know they're working on the, the whole cemetery. Yeah. So. I know Jeff and Robin <coughs> took initiative. So hopefully, I don't know if we need a commission or something to look after that cemetery to keep it up once it's Back to life. Yeah. So that's my suggestion. Well, thank you, Mr. Bob. I hope you continue to help Robin and Jeff and all those involved. And if you have any ideas for people who want to, like I said, be on that commission or committee to help, you know, keep it spruced up, you know, come forth with some names and hopefully, you know, we can, you know, get it working better once it gets cleaned up completely. Thank you. Any other public comment on agenda items at this time? Okay. Uh, so I make the motion to accept the minutes and reports. Minutes from October 14th and 28th meetings and reports from the Fire Department, Police Department, Treasurer, Controller, Code Office, Health Department, Park and Rec, and Planning Commission. Do I have a second? Second. Savage? Yes. Farnham? Yes. Eister? Yes. Roche? Yes. Um, I do have two additions to the agenda. One is the 2025 budget. And the other one is the police department of uh, part-time clerk, Renee, 
Durham from part-time to full-time. Do I have a second to add those two items to the agenda? Second. Brocious. Yes. Barnhart. Yes. Savage. Yes. Eister. Yes. Uh, code office update, Mr. Barnhart. I'd just like to update everybody on the total transactions. I'll be down at first. Administrative free, contractor's license, housing late charge, housing rental fee, Northeast inspection consultants, PA, uh, DCED, state fee, quality of life, rental inspections, restaurant health, food street, subdivision land, volume discount zoning, review permit for a total of $9,922. I'd also like to tell everybody at the uh, uh, nuisance abatement ordinance that, that we approved, uh, that we were assessed points for if uh, your property, if somebody's in it, and commits a crime and is charged with it. As of this date, there was 10 letters sent out. Six of them have 12 points, which puts their property on the nuisance list right away. One property has eight points, and three of them have six points. So we are taking care of that. So if you have, if you have a tenant, keep an eye on them, because you wind up in the nuisance list. And if, I don't know, from there we will talk to Joel and say, what can we do? Well, just following the nuisance the property nuisance rules and just going from there. Yep. Right. Thank you, Councilman Barnhart. Old business. Councilman Barnhart, you're up again. I am? Yep. Uh, I make a motion to approve the second reading of Ordinance 175-91, Principal Solar Energy Systems, and Ordinance 175-92, Accessory Solar Energy Systems. Second. Eister. Savage. Yes. Brocious. Yes. Barnhart. Yes. All right. Uh, moving on to new business, to the ones we've added. Uh, I make the motion, oh, well, first of all, it'll be the 2025 budget. Uh, we had our budget meetings prior to. We did balance a budget for 2025 with no tax increase. So I make the motion to accept the preliminary first round reading of the 2025 budget. Do I have a second? Savage. Yes. Barnhart. Yes. Eiser. Yes. Brocious. Yes. Uh, moving on to the second item that was added, uh, making part-time uh, police clerk uh, Renee Durham to full-time. That was in our budget that was passed. Everything is in there. Uh, so I make the motion to move her from part-time to full-time so we have someone up there five days a week during opening hours. Do I have a second? Barnhart. Yes. Eister. Yes. Savage. Yes. Brocious. Yes. Uh, new business, assessment change order order number six. Mr. Backer. Uh, this is for change order for 635, assessment uh, lateral repairs due to um, uh, a incident that happened. Also, a uh, tree removal on Packer and sewer lateral damages that were done at 529, assessment avenue. Um, just to give everybody an update, we're on budget for this project. Um, even with this, so uh, it's going to be coming down to the wire, but um, right now we're looking good, so I'm looking for a vote um, for this chamber. I, I'm sorry, may I have a, I have a question? Uh, sure. So, the original contract price, and then it says a decrease. So, we made some changes as far as materials when the project started, which decreased the uh, cost of the original uh, bid that came in, okay. and the contractor that was awarded actually uh, was gracious enough to take that decrease. Um, and uh, so we've used that decrease even with, you know, these change orders coming up. We're still below our original um, contract price. That's why it was a decrease. So this is reflecting, and I'm just making sure I'm reading this right. So this mm -hmm. is reflecting the entirety of the project with the reduction of six, about 68000 and then the, just the addition of the change order in this with the trees and the other damages. Yeah, so, um, so with the change order, it's $3,300,000. Three three million three hundred thousand rough numbers. Um, so for approximately uh, fifty one fifty thousand below budget. Thank you. Yep. I'll thank the motion. Second. Barnhart. Yes. Eister. Yes. Savage. Yes. Brocious. Yes. Uh, keep going, Mr. Backer. I'll say Grant. 
Um, last meeting, uh, council voted to uh, be the applicant for the LSA statewide uh, grant for the Albright Center. Um, this is just going for a resolution, uh, a resolution that's required for the grant application itself. Um, the grant, uh, we are asking for $50,000 for um, a study to be done for the Albright Center Improvement um, uh, Project. So I'm looking for the vote in this uh, affirmative for this resolution. Is this for the facility itself, like the building itself for the studies out what it's for? Yes, yes, correct. And it's to study the piece of the um, exterior of the building. Yes. So Reporting brick, um, checking out the, the windows, what to do with the stained glass windows, making the building more energy efficient, okay. fixing the sidewalks so that the everything's flat level, no cracks. So when you mean so that water doesn't drain into the building. And what do you mean by the stained glass windows? Just out of curiosity. Uh, well, we're not sure what they're going to do with the stained glass win windows yet, but they're very inefficient. And um, so, so what do you, I'm, just, I'm just out of curiosity. So, what do you mean you don't know, like replacing them with not stained glass windows anymore? Or? Are they replacing them, somehow covering them so that you can still see the stained glass windows, but they can be viewed through the building and be more efficient? Um, just doing a study to check out the exterior of the building to see what we can do to make it um, better. And we're going to do a Masonic Temple because we did that on the second floor. We have stained glass, you can see them on the inside. Mm -hmm. there's, I, I understand that there's probably several different ways to handle it, so the study would help determine um, how to handle the stained glass windows. I, but also the exterior of the building. Repointing bricks, fixing sidewalks, um, just making sure that that building lasts for another 100 years. I'll make the motion for the city to, to apply for the help. I'll second. Yeah. 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 Eister. Yes. Savage. Yes. Brocious. Yes. Barnhart. Yes. Keep going, Councilman Barnhart. You're up, sir. Uh, <clears throat> make a motion to approve uh, resolutions 2024-039 and 2024-040 to uh, put uh, 235 Pine Street and 25 North 5th Street to add them to the public nuisance list. Second. Eister. Yes. 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 Uh, I make a motion to update the public nuisance list resolution 2024 041. Second. Savage. Yes. Brocious. Yes. Eister. Yes. Yes. Keep going, Councilman Walmart. I'd like to make a motion to promote Jennifer Buchanan to full-time code clerk. She's doing a heck of a job. She's doing two people's work jobs. Is that effective immediately? Yes, effective tomorrow. Second. Eister. Yes. Savage. Yes. Brocious. Yes. Yes. Oh, uh, by the way, that's for the same pay she's getting now. Yeah. Keep going, Councilman Bonhart. One more. I'd like to amend... Ordinance is to make a motion to uh, approve ordinance 175-43 and 175-46. Second. Savage. Yes. Brocious. Yes. Barnhart. Yes. Eisner. Yes. And just to go back to when we voted for uh, Renee Duran, that was going effective January 1st of 2025. Uh, so moving on here to new insurance plan for employees. Um, we met with Purdy Insurance to change our uh, insurance plan here from what we currently have to a better cost saving one for the city. So we had to have an official vote to do that. Uh, when this does go into place, uh, Purdy's Insurance will be sitting down with every city employee explaining their different changes in their policies. It will not be costing them more money, but actually be saving them money. So I'll make the motion to accept a new insurance plan for our uniform and non-uniform employees. Do I have a second? Question. Yes, sir. Comment rather, just so that the employees realize that they'll have no copay for uh, their insurance. Insurance for the auto, which is unheard of these days. Yes, yeah, so the city will be covering that copay along with their premiums will be going down, so the percentage that they do pay will be less in their checks. So it'll be cost savings to them. So I'll make the, I'll make the motion. Do I have a second? Second. Eister. Yes. Savage. Yes. Brocious. Yes. Barnhart. Yes. 
Uh, moving on here, proposed fee adjustment letter for our city solicitor. Do I have to accept that? Do I have a second? Second. Barnhart. Yes. Eister. Yes. Savage. Yes. Brocious. Yes. Uh, moving on here to Ink in the Rink. Uh, obviously, that was a successful event last year. I know Chris is starting plans this year and met with Councilman Eister. Uh, could you just fill us in on some of the details? I know he had an issue with possibly some of the fees that may be coming about, so could you fill the council in, please, Mr. Eister? Yes, uh, what we have done is we're going to agree with he's going to pay 4000 for the event. He's going to eliminate the bands this year because we felt really didn't do much for him. And uh, the food vendors, we're going to take care of the food vendors. Okay, uh, quick question, Councilman Eister. I know uh, Chris had some concerns about the fee. I know he was open up to pay a percentage. Would you be some? Would you be interested in doing that instead of you know locking him in for a set dollar amount? Because He's the one that told me. Well, I'm just saying, if he wants to change to a percentage, I'm just making up some number. Would you be ex accepting of that? Well, I'll talk to Chris, but I mean, we already had this discussion. I'm not sure where you're coming from. Well, he reached out to me with some concerns because of some of the fees that may have been suggested. And, and he, you know, it's one of those things you don't know who's going to show up and who's not going to be locked into that dollar amount he may have been concerned about. So. He indicated to Carl why he wanted to have a set fee instead of an open fee. Well, I'm just saying, if, if he wants to change, would you be open to changing? I guess that's my well, question. I'll talk to him today. Okay. So I'm just saying, if he wants to change his mind, I'm asking, are you okay with that? Well, I'll give him a call and I'll ask him. But, but as of today, he was happy. He's the one who told me the numbers. Okay. I'm, like I said, I'm just asking because the original numbers he was not very, he was very afraid of. I'll we'll say that. Well, that was a couple weeks ago when we had okay. discussed it. Okay. Like I said, I just don't want to have, I don't want to lose that event because it was very successful. We're well, losing the event. Well, with, with the original ones we were going to. I just want to make sure we well, don't. Well, funny. Okay. Well, you apparently know more about it than I do. I, I, do I need to refresh your memory? Because I have the numbers. He sent them to me, what was originally asked. Yeah, I moved the numbers. Mm -hmm. We wanted $5 ahead. I know, and $250 a, a vendor, which about was about twelve five. And his well, issue well, was... Well, first of all, the vendors were free last year, and it cost the city. Well, a lot of things cost the city that we don't charge fees for. Guess what we worked on tonight? The fee schedule. But not for the softball fields, we didn't. Oh, we are going to be discussing that. But, but it's but I'm but we don't even know what they're going to be, and there was no even indication of what okay. they were. Where did the ball fields get into the? the but you're saying we didn't. Nothing was charged last year, and it costed the city money. I'm referring to the same thing with the ball fields. Every time someone's up there, it costs the city money. But I'm just no. Well, so if he accepts the four thousand, can we just accept the four thousand for this year and be open to change? Well, wants to change the structure. Agreement drawn up. Like I said, we talked today. Like I said, I just don't want to. I just want to make sure he is good with the dollar amount. He doesn't feel like he'd go somewhere else to make to get a better attendance. Well, I would hope he would. So he's the one told me. Oh, I just want to make sure. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Uh, can I add to that? Yeah. yeah summer kickoff. I, I wouldn't have him just at the same time again. Well, they're not. The dates just changed. Well, when is the date then? Uh, the weekend of the seventeenth uh, of June. Of May. Of May. All right, sounds good. Thank you, Councilman Eister. Do you know if he was at around the bottom line? Pardon? Is that around Shipley's bottom? I don't know the Shipley problems. I haven't been there. Right well, well. It's usually <laughs> 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 it's usually the first or second week of May. That's normally when they do it. I'm not exactly sure. So, what, Spike? Do you see some concerns with that before we get too far? Any, you know? Well, yeah, because it goes back to the number of people that. Well, that'd be something you guys can look into, I guess. All right. Well, high schoolers can get tattoos as long as their parents sign off on them. Now, they don't have to be answering. You know, you can do anything nowadays with the parent consent. All right, moving on here. We've got some appointments for the Nuisance Abatement Board. We have Robin Garrier, Jeff Russell Husky, Nathan Savage, Travis Bremingen, Andres Manresa. Eric uh, Miller Dorsile and William Staley. Do I have a second to appoint these people to the nuisance abatement board? I'll second. Eister. Yes. Savage. Abstain. <laughs> yes. Brocious. Yes. Yes. Okay. 
So I need to amend the motion. I, I apologize since I forgot it was November. So the appointments will be for the remaining of 2024 and into 2025. So I guess I'll have to read both again. I'm sorry. My fault. I'll second any second. Eister? Yes. Savage? Abstain. Brocious? Yes. Farmer? Yes. Uh, the following individuals have, we don't need to vote, these are just acknowledging their letters of interest in the following boards. Uh, to the sweep of Joe Jody and Kirk Polovich, to the Municipal Board, Earl Bittner and Corey Fossil, to the Redevelopment Authority, Clay Rowe, uh, and Jeff Orla Husky. So those are individuals who put their letters of interest in the, for those boards in 2025. Uh, moving on here to the back here, uh, the Taser Project. Uh, we all met with the chief to review there the, the taser project we want to go moving forward here uh, to upgrade the city and their technology in the police department here. Uh, does anyone have any questions here? I know we went with the chief there a couple weeks ago to review it. If there are no questions, I will make that in the form of a motion to accept the taser project. Do I have a second? I'll second. Yes. Savage? Yes. Brocious? Yes. Barnard? Yes. Uh, moving on here, Crime Watch program. Let's turn this over to Chief real quick. Okay, so basically what I was looking at with the Crime Watch program um, is in 2025 is looking between now and January of getting an organized group of individuals who would be interested, um, maybe reaching out with Jeff, put it out on the website. Um, but getting a Crime Watch program set back up in the city of Sunbury, we haven't had one in, in many years. Um, and then basically having an officer for each ward, um, maybe consolidating wards, but at least having uh, some type of crime watch program. They then would go through a, a program with, with me as well as with uh, some other individuals on what we're going to be looking for. Um, I also, in just thinking outside the box here, was thinking with the crime watch program, using some of these crime watch people to reach out to some of our businesses. Uh, we can find out who has video cameras in certain areas. Um, they can, we, they can also, we can use them for, you know, maybe going into businesses, getting business contacts, so that we have an updated business contact. So crime watch would play a very vital role. It's not just going out and, and, you know, putting somebody and looking for something. It's actually making them involved in the community and actually putting them out there and having them help us as a police department, as a city and a whole, um, helping out with codes as well. They can bring back things that they see in their ward. I think can pass that on to, on to uh, Council Barnhart, and we can address some of the issues that they see. But having them play a more proactive role, not just in going out and, and looking at a bad guy and thinking that that's a bad guy and reporting it's a bad guy, but using them how, how the Crime Watch program has been set up in, in different municipalities. And they can really, we can, use some young people, some uh, older people. We use everybody that would be willing to come and be part of this. Everybody's going to take a crucial job and, you know, it's a volunteer type position, but at the same time, giving back to the city, maybe, you know, going in again, looking for cameras in different areas, saying, okay, hey, marking it down, there's a camera here, there's a camera here, they can bring that information back to us. You know, just a very vital role. So I'd like to, uh, get a vote to initiate the Crime Watch program again in, in January of 2025. They, they will have training too, right? Yes, correct. All right, so I'll make the motion to get the process going for the Crime Watch program for the 2025 year. Do I have a second? I'll second. Ice. Yes. yes. Savage? Yes. Approaches? Yes. Yes. Uh, moving on here, K-9 unit program. Chief, back to you again, sir. Again, looking uh, as we progress forward, um, we've had a K-9 program in, in the past, um, but we haven't had it in a long time. Uh, looking at some of the statistics that I've been looking at with uh, traffic stops, um, we have a couple officers that basically reach into the, the, the realm of over 600 traffic stops. Um, having a dog, um, and I'm not an advocate for a bike dog, a more advocate for a tracking dog and for a, a uh, drug alert dog. Um, but it would have to be fully funded by um, donations. And I have a couple officers that are willing to solicit for donations if it would be approved tonight to start this. 
uh, to start uh, soliciting for the donations of the dog, the insurance, the food, the vet bills, everything. It would have to be fully funded before we, you know, move forward. But what I'm looking for tonight is to enact this canine unit program that they can start going out and soliciting funds to they can get a dog. Do you have any idea of the cost of it? I'm going to say somewhere between twenty-five and thirty thousand dollars. That's what it's going to be. But with fundraising, they can do shirt fundraising. Uh, they just got dogs in Shamokin, Hill Township, uh, Mount Carmel. Um, but again, I'm not a big advocate on a bike dog because of insurance reasons. And I, so, and I know with you saying those municipalities, I know a lot of local businesses were in favor of that, and you know were happily happily sponsored those things. So I don't see. You know, as you know, if we approve this here, that you know our businesses here, and you know, just regular citizens won't be willing to donate to help right. and fight the cause. And it's something I'm looking at in, in 2025. It's things that I'd like to add to as I've been with my tenure, just progressing the city in, in, in updating and having different programs that we have with Prime Watch, this canine program, taking um, a proactive approach, just making a proactive approach, and again. It's not something that the city would fall back on the city having to pay for. It would have to be fully funded before I would even, you know, basically say that I would enter, entertain. I want to entertain the fact of going out and soliciting for funds. If we can uh, obtain the amount that's needed, then I would bring it back to the table, and it would be on council to, to go forward with it. I'll just, what will this cost the, uh, the city for? The city basically would have to be able to provide a vehicle for the dog. And what I was thinking, since car two is a 2000, like it's, it's one of the oldest cars in our fleet, um, but we just put a new engine in it, we just put a new transmission in it, it would be a vehicle that then we just keep around instead of getting rid of, we make that the canine vehicle. But what about the staff? Staffing for it would basically be paid for, it'd be an on-duty dog, so the dog would be on duty with the officer that's here. If the dog would be called on an off-duty basis, the only time the dog could be used would be for task force, which would be a reimbursement. So if you guys pull over a call and that person's off-duty, are you going to bring that in? I would bring that officer in. Um, overtime? What's that? Overtime? It would be in overtime. Um, but again, as many times as, as the traffic stops and the dog would usually be out. It would be a person who I was going to work for 3 p.m. to 3 a.m. shift. So it would be somebody that the dog would be here most of the time. So the big out, the outfit would be for the car, and I, I would use car two, being that's the oldest one in the fleet, but we've, we've made some modifications to car two because of the engine going out, the transmission going out, but use that as the canine vehicle. But again, anything for the canine cage and everything would have to be funded. The only thing that the city would be looking at is funding the officer for overtime and providing the vehicle. But it goes back to it's, it's what the cause, but what we're fighting as a cause. That's what's going on. Right. The Quite, so the training? Sorry. The training. training would be also included in the donations. So it'd be definite no bike dog. No, I do not want to have Just through the years, we have had different lawsuits because we had a home that did. In my 23 years of being here, I have been a witness to a lot of different dogs and I would never have to pay for a bike dog. And back in the past, the one officer we had had the dog to, to drive up the road to like uh, Wilkes-Barre someplace to have a shampoo. Yeah, all, all the vet, veterinary and anything like that, any, any type of maybe the uh, dog being washed would be a, a donation. I would, again, it's going to be a donation, everything except for the vehicle that the officer goes from. Do you remember what I'm referring to? Or do you plead the fifth? Is this going to increase our liability? Probably not. If it's a no white dog, if it was a white dog, then yes, it would. The it, I mean, it could have some kind of depending on the breed. If you get a Rottweiler and say no white dog, it will probably increase our insurance. If you get a Labrador Retriever, it probably won't. So that's, that's, and what, what I'm really looking for is actually a, a, a hound dog. A um, bloodhound? Blood yeah, that will not. That that's not one of the breeds that normally increases liability insurance. Chief, two things. I don't for logistics. I'm getting this up. Aside from the municipalities, I know that our prison just expanded the canine unit, so uh, the prison staff can be available to help you with that. And we actually have an insurance policy that we just went through less than three months ago. So that I'd be happy to sit down with you and go over. Excellent. Thank you. Any other questions?
Okay, so I will make the motion to start the process start the process for the K-9 unit program by, by starting off by allowing the police department and the chief to go out and solicit donations. Do I have a second? Savage. Yes. Bonhart. Yes. Eister. Yes. Yes. All right. Uh, moving on. Obviously, know City Hall remodel. Jim is getting with the architect to do those plans. I guess we'll call it. And but either way, like some of these things, once again, they're not going to go away. And as I said I did talk to Treasurer Troop about this. How we have the debt service tax, and right now we're putting it all onto the police department. But I, I, like I said, I'd like to go out for an RFP just to see what options are out there for loans. It's not locking us in anything. It's just seeing what options are out there. Because from what we have set aside here for what the difference would be, we could say we could have it paid off between four to five years. So it's back to one of those things. No matter what we do, the problems aren't going to go away. Even if you know, we close our eyes and hope they're still going to be here long-term wise. So it's just something I, I would like to do. I mean, like I said, it's not, it's not locking us in anything. It's just seeing what our options are. And the, paper. The, the bids will be coming out there. I think that the next council meeting, you know, when exactly there can go. Let me look at my calendar. We're talking about where we're we bidding the pieces of the project rather than it's in its entire yeah. That way we can take it and decide uh, what it's going to cost for the safety issues. But in the meantime, can I go out for the RFP at the same time for what we have right now? I mean, I said it doesn't cost anything, it's just. So we have we see what our options are because even with the bid packages come back doesn't mean we don't even know what they're going to cost yet. It could be, you know, we could have the amount or we could be short twenty thousand dollars. Give an example. Do you want to go out for an RFP for the total? Yeah, just to see. Cost for what we have now. Yeah, then if you know, hey, we don't need the entire thing for the new ones. We only need. I'm just making up the number. We only need twenty thousand dollars additionally. Okay, but you know, either way. The problems that we have are not going to go away. Like the out front, the concrete isn't going to get fixed overnight because oh, we're, we're, because we don't fix it, it's still going to be there regardless. So the new bid opening is going to be uh, November 26, so it's the day after our next meeting. So then it basically gives us till the end of January, not to be uh, the last meeting in December to see. All right, we have that ARPA money; we have to get locked in, or else we lose it. The ninth, right? So. So I don't know what council's thoughts are. If it's just hey, see what happens, or but either way, we're going to run out of time with those ARPA funds. Yeah, but the bid opening isn't to the day after, so we won't be able to vote anything to the first meeting in January. I mean, first meeting in December. And those monies have to be allocated, so it's under contract. Yeah, so pretty much by the, that meeting, we have to have okay a contract saying we're going to spend those dollars. But this the ARPA fund dollars. Do we have any other special meetings ever says? Uh, we have. Uh, it would just be budget meetings. We have a budget meeting, I think. Yeah, but so we, we have a balanced budget meeting. We have the anymore. 9th, and then we advertise. I advertise for the 30th of December just in case we needed a Monday before the new year. Which we don't, because we have a balanced budget at this point. Well, that's what I'm saying. Well, I'm here again because they did. Of the council, we don't have a meeting within an hour. We can discuss what we want to put on the uh, all the funds and how to speak about that. Or whatever it is, the day it's open. I, I, Mayor, I don't, this is an opinion, but I mean, yeah. with with an RFP, I think my personal opinion as one person, I, I think it might be better to have that meeting only because when you go out for the RFP, you're going to get a bunch of bank solicitations that are coming in with special rates and then it's going to change the rate and the rate structure yeah. when you break it into pieces. They're going to have to redo everything for a second RFP then if we break up the project apart. So do you think we'll, if we do it without having the final number, what we're going out again for, do you think they'll give us a, like a worst case scenario and it could be worse than what it would actually could be? What's, what's, what's the problem? Uh, for, 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 I agree with Kate. I would. All right, that's uh, that's fine. We can do the special meeting and decide then what we're going to do. So you have number four. That works. Yeah. That's fine. Yeah. 
That's why we teach it in 430. It won't take that long to open up. So. We can always start a little bit. No, we have to start. Yeah, we can't start early. We can't start early. All right. So I guess I'll just table the RFP to a later date. Do I have a second? Second. On our yes. Ice cream. Yes. Savage. Yes. Grocery store. Yes. Uh, moving on to the police vehicle. So as we spoke in the budget meeting, I just want to reiterate now, we have to have a vote to make this official. So we did order a vehicle that is currently sitting up at Sunbury Motors. It is going to be purchased from the money we have allocated for the budget. It's going to be but funds are going to be coming out of the part-time budget and other things to outfit it. Once we, also at the same time, we are going to end up selling the pickup truck and whatever funds that were taken out of the different line items will be reimbursed back into those line items and whatever money is remaining will go towards the next vehicle in 2025. Does that make sense, everybody? Josh. Yes, sir. Okay. Just Yes. Should we not make a motion that, that directs those monies to go back into those land items just so that they're clear? Trump? Yeah, I mean, that's not a problem. I think. Was that part of your motion already? It was to make sure when we sell the truck, whatever money, because we're taking money back into the line items. They go back into the line items that they were taken out of, so they're fully reimbursed for 20. That's going to be your motion. Well, that's what I like like it to be, so that way it's guaranteed to go back to where we're at. Yeah, yeah that's, that's my point. Oh, yeah, yeah, I'm he sorry. Wanted, he was making sure that was part of your motion. Oh, yes, yes, I thought you said not to do that. Yeah, yeah no. that's part of the motion, yes. Just All so right. that's clear. Yeah, that, that's where the funds are supposed to go back in. And, and, and Mayor, just to, just to add, the reason we're looking at the vehicle and the truck is, it's, I, I just believe it was like the vehicle that we had before, the uh, uh, Tahoe. It's just too big for the city. It's too big to maneuver. I just don't see where it, it, it fits. Beneficial. We, we need a vehicle to tow something we can get a city truck. Um, but by swooping this out and getting something else, I think that we also gain gas mileage again. There's, it's just, there's a lot of savings there. So you're not going to pull your trailer? No, I'm going to use a truck for city. We use Walker's truck. I guess a lot of you driving around using it. <laughs> All right, so I'll make that in the form of motion. Do I have a second? Second. Arnhart. Yes. Eister. Yes. 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 Uh, Councilman Eister. I'm going to suggest you table the next one only because of the budget. Okay. Thank you. I second. Uh, he makes that a motion. I'll second it. Arnhart. Yes. Savage. Yes. Brocious. Yes. Eister. Yes. Go ahead, Councilman Savage. I am seeking, while well, making a motion for the approval of abstract vouchers for the general fund in the amount of $41,801.19, liquid fuels in the amount of $9,468.33, private grants in the amount of $87,882.86, and payroll in the amount of $69,961.21. Second. Barnard. Yes. Eister. Yes. Savage. Yes. Brocious. Yes. I'm saying is we did it last year. 
We had a couple departments who decided that I have money in my budget and I could use some new tools. You know, not necessary to do that. They weren't doing tools. True. Just in case one breaks, I have a backup. Oh, right. Or a third. Or a third. And wrenches. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Spain. Appreciate that. All right, moving on. Discussion. Uh, Sunbury Cemetery, Councilman Bornhart. Yeah, I'd like to thank Jeff and Robin for, for the outstanding job they're doing in the Sunbury Cemetery. They're really they're getting the uh, tombstones up in place, and I think they're doing a great job. Uh, if we could get some more help for them, though, that would be outstanding. Somebody wants to volunteer their time, just come in and talk to Jeff and you know, get them get them going on what they what needs to be done. Yep, and I do know there's been a lot of, I mean, reach out for help. I know the ROTC did it, and some other individuals reached out, so hopefully they can keep going and bring it back to life, like and, Mr. Bub said. And to get the Boy Scouts done, or maybe for an Eagle badge or something, you know. Get it cleaned up, yeah. So thank you, Robin and Jeff, and all who are involved. All right, uh, moving on, uh, amusement fee, uh, Councilman Barnhart. Um, we're talking about raising the amusement fee for the, for the machines. We're not quite sure yet. We're going to, uh, the high, high end is 10%. Uh, we want to go monthly. It, it, we're, we're just figuring out. It could either be 10% monthly or quarterly, or we're just working out all the money. But, we have the potential to raise uh, $300,000 a year by collecting, collecting this money. Yeah, and the reason uh, Council Barnard exhausted him, this, so Jeff and I, Robin, recently went to a budget training and they brought new modern ways to help revive communities. And this is one of the suggestions they had through the PA skill machines and this amusement fee uh, of you taking those fees and putting them back into the community as uh, community events to help bring business to your local municipality to help put more people in the establishments. So this was one of the, the new modern ways that they're seeing different municipalities doing with these fees that they collect for these PA skill machines. And like I said, this will be Councilman Barnhart's working with our solicitor to uh, get this ordinance revamped because the one that we have in the books was last amended back in the 70s. So this time we have to up, we need to update a little bit. Yeah, we go in there for like the side grants. We could start something like that, a match, uh, sidewalks, a match. It's just to help businesses mostly downtown. Yeah, so like I guess this is what to put in. Well, this, we just want to bring it to discussion because this would be a good way to help you know, fund different things in our city. And like I said, they really push for, you know, economic development and these community events that, you know, to boost tourism. So, Councilman Bornhart, continue the updates, please. I mean, when you get further on with the solicitor. What's that? No, keep up the good work. Oh. Any other questions on that? All right, uh, moving on. So, Front Street Intersection. I know, I know the gentleman came last week. They're talking about their plans with the property themselves. So I just wanted to see, where were we at on that intersection? Like the study. What intersection? Front. At front and Susquehanna. Oh, okay. Yeah, because, that. sorry, front, I should, that was my fault. Um, so we have to go out to bid for that property because, or excuse me, for that, because what we originally had it for was um, to use ARPA funds and what we substitute the ARPA funds with was an ARLI grant. The ARLI, uh, well, BCD, um, or PennDOT, excuse me, won't accept what we did for the, um, uh, for the ARPA funds, our process, in order to uh, use what the contractor CS engineering to do the study currently. So we have to go through the process of an RFP. So did we do this? Oh, sorry. Okay. Uh, I did. They gave me an answer, not answer. Uh, I'll be honest. I I consulted with our solicitor and asked basically what are they telling me, and he, his opinion was we have to go on our people. And you also spoke to Jimmy regarding that. Yes. Yes. Correct. So are we using ARPA funds for it then? No, no, no. We've already re, we already uh, reallocated those and everything. That that was done. So I, I guess my question was with the gentleman who came here last week talked about what his company's plans were, and with the county. I, I'm just confused why we're going to still continue to push that when we don't know the future of the site with the solar, if it's possible, if it goes through. I'm just, I'm just, I, just I guess my question is why are we going to continue for an intersection 
when we don't know the future of it right now, when there's talks between that company and the county, I guess that's my question. We're going to spend all this money, I mean, let me rephrase this, all this grant money for intersection to into a facility that's a solar field, possibly. Could the early money be reallocated to another project? That's, I, I guess that's my question. We're going to use all this I'm money for intersection for a solar field. Well, uh, first of all, it happened two weeks ago. But that's why I'm bringing it up now. Well, I would also like to point out the ordinance that you guys just passed for a second reading would not allow that facility to first. There's also ordinance can be amended and changed. But I'm just saying it goes back to like we're going to spend, if it does not change or if it does change and it does go there, which regardless, we're going to spend all this money on a intersection for a possible solar field. That, that's what I'm saying. Like, we're, we're, I, I just I didn't know what our thoughts were on that, but like I said we're going to spend this money for intersection for a sol possible solar field. Whether it happens or not, we don't know. We want we want economic development. I, 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 like I, this think, I think we all, I think everybody agrees with that here. Correct. Um, one of the biggest hurdles to that property is entrance. Correct. It's correct. And an, an ordinance that was just passed would negate that from being a a area. That could be used for solar, but all the I, 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 I know that. I know ordinances can change. I understand that. That wasn't what I was going to say. But you did say that earlier. So but I that's not what I was going to say there. My point is, if the individual was halfway correct with what the DEP says, can go there, which we don't know is correct or incorrect because we don't actually know what the study says or if he's incorrect or not. But once again, what's up? Yes. He's incorrect. And, and, and uh, yes, uh, we did have someone uh, else that was a third party, I believe, Joel, correct me if I'm wrong, when we were looking to purchase that property through the RAFP, we had a third party look at the um, councilman, uh, uh, DEP, Sabi, DEP reports? Yeah, thank you. The DEP, DEP reports, correct? That's true. And, and what that individual stated as far as not being able to use this for anything other than solar um, wasn't wouldn't be an accurate statement. So my so question like is, like I said, I, everyone wants economic data. My question is, so your simple question, I don't know if it says in there, I don't know if people say yes or no. Can you put living quarters, not residential, commercial living quarters on that piece of property? Like for example, if someone wanted to put a restaurant, wanted to put a hotel that's elevated with a parking garage underneath it, can you do that? What's well, that living quarters? We're not living well, I'm just using, I, I understand that, what I'm saying, is that allowed by DEP standards? The restaurant or living quarters? Both. Not living quarters, I mean like a hotel or a restaurant. A hotel probably is under living quarters if you're spending the night. Or the okay, living so, uh, but I'm just asking you. I would say living quarters, no. Restaurant, yes. Okay, so DEP That's said that. That's my understanding. Well, but we, no, I get it, but it's one of these things, what we understand, what's fact, are two different things. So, like, so do we actually know what can go on the property? Yeah. I, I put myself in the for what I do. The person I talked to uh, who did a little research for me, I could put a hotel there uh, at this point. No. Uh, it's not as doom and gloom as that guy would have said. Now, there's one other thing I will say that regardless of our my personal opinions of this up there, I think it's wise for us to continue with the red light in the event that we don't know what's going to happen at the county level. We have no control over that. Um, we don't even know if this guy is going to be able to the money to buy it. But I know if we sit back and don't do anything, it's going to make the project even further ahead. And cost oh, I'm not saying we shouldn't do anything. I'm so not saying that. I, I would suggest to you that we keep on track Yeah. Well, I'm not disagreeing with any of that. I just want, you know, I don't, I mean, I know Nate doesn't know, but like, for example, if the, if that company does proceed and the county sells it to them, <coughs> I just didn't know where it left us in the grand team because, because in a sense, we don't own the property and we can't, if they want to buy it and do what, whatever they want with it, it's up to them. But, well, again, I mean, I'm all for the intersection. It needs to be yeah, done, but. You know, on the other hand, as Eric pointed out, Says you can't put that there. So, you know, <laughs> the county itself, so we decide that's not the way we want to go. If the council decides that's not the way we want to go, obviously, then, you know, 
that was kind of it. Well, the sad part is it's 22 acres of prime land for development. I've been sitting there for years going, get me wrong. And by the same token, solar panel does nothing for us. Is there a I'm not, I'm not advocating one way or the other. I'm advocating. Oh, yeah, yeah, I, I just want to know. So that we're ready for whatever. Yeah. So in going back to that, Joey may be able to answer this question mm -hmm. better. Can we actually get a direct answer from the EEP? Meaning, I think like, we did. I think there are but, other cases out there. Yes, I think we can. Okay, I mean, like, in paper, not like, hey, I spoke to this guy and he no. interprets it this way. Meaning, like, on paper, saying this, but these are the things that are allowed. Because right now, it's all, well, I talked to this guy. I think this. There's actually nothing on paper that states it. So, I'll, I'll give you the report. I'm just saying, yeah. I have it too. Okay. Um, the, the long and the short. Is it okay, Nate? If I go ahead? Yeah. Okay. When we were looking into buying it, I talked to the original engineer, who happens to be a fraternity brother of mine, um, who did all the testing at the site. He confirmed that there's one area that would be harder to build on than other areas, right. yeah. but you could cover that and park on it and put other things in the other areas. Um, I also had an environmental engineer read the reports and of the EP and confirm what that first guy told me. But on top of that, I read the reports, and I it was years ago, so I can't tell you exactly what they yeah, said. Yeah. But there are reports out there that I think if we read them will tell us exactly what you can and cannot do. I've um, read them in the yeah. um, I didn't read them recently. No, no, I didn't. So I, that's that's what I can tell you. Because, like I said, after that gentleman spoke, there's been a lot of questions now. You know how it is. They heard something, they're going with it. So, right. okay. As long as people can say, hey, everybody can say, all right, good enough. All right. If, if he really wanted to impress us, he would have brought the reports and said, we can't do this. Okay. He didn't do that. He didn't bring a business card. I, and I would <laughs> I'm thinking that, you know, <laughs> and I, I, he had my information, and myself and Steve both asked for the information that he had and his contacts for DEP, and I have yet to receive. Yeah, I think, I think, uh, I think we should worry about solar. Yeah. All right. Well, at the, or given the idea that there are some questions, and I'm not positive I still have the report. Nate, can I get the report? Nate will provide me with the report. I'll go through it. I will go through it with an environmental engineer um, who I'm acquainted with and get answers. I think that'll put a lot of people's minds at rest. I can do that. And I'll issue a report to the council with my opinion as to what we can do with the property. Sounds good. Does that make sense? Yeah, wonderful. Okay. All right. Hey, since that just says Front Street, can I bring up Front and Reagan? That uh, house got knocked down. Yeah, what, what were, you, were you driving that truck or something? Yeah. yeah. I know how to take a wider turn. Just the porch. <laughs> just the porch. Just the porch. Well, I know the. PennDOT did them, the pylons we were they had in there, and PennDOT made us take them out years ago. I'd like to get a hold of PennDOT and see if we can put something or what they would suggest, because those, those new drivers, they just they don't know how to drive that in trucks, so and they just cut that too. Because they, they hit the porch, and it was a week later, somebody else ripped the papers down and got close to hitting it again. So you're saying you're coming out of retirement? No, no. Was well, it a Swift truck that did that? Huh? Was it a Swift truck? <laughs> I don't think we can put anything in the right of way of the highway, but I think PennDOT can. I yeah, think we have requested a PennDOT that they put something in. They probably have to do a study first, yeah. Oh, so, sure. <laughs> then we'll have to pay for yeah. it. Here's an idea. Look at your porch. I know. <laughs> All right. Uh, moving on, uh, budget training. So this. Long story short, like Jeff and I run into this training and there was a lot of good information. I highly suggest council go to some of their trainings for their, each of their departments because <laughs> rules, regulations, and laws are changing and it's good to be updated on the newest things. And it's just my suggestion because some of the ways that we do our own budgeting is so outdated. So like for example, they're they're like, I know we had the comprehensive study done, they suggested 18%. The new, the, the new common ground is you should have at least 25% of your budget in reserve. You should be budgeting for repairs on properties that you know, for example, I'm just using an example, the pavilion outside, you know the roof's only gonna last 10 years. Start budgeting every year for each of these properties so you have money set aside for when you do need it. 
for vehicles. They said each department should have their own reserve. So it's just, like I said, if there's trainings out there, I highly suggest you take them because the way we do things, our processes and procedures, they are old school. And when we went up there and we said, hey, this is what we do, we got laughed after like, that, sh that changed 20 years ago. Well, the only thing I'll say to you is this, Josh. Yes. We've talked about this several times about setting this stuff up. You fly for the ones that have to make that happen. You mean trainings or the policies and procedures? Or both? To do what you're supposed You guys about. control the budget. You control the budget. If you're going to do this, then you guys say you're going to do this. Well, if I'm you're going to set up some type of reserve, then set it up. No, I get it. I'm talking about just do it. No, I understand. I'm just saying, but like, it, to actually go and ask the questions to see what other people are doing to say it doesn't sound so outdated. That's that's the point I'm trying to say. Like, we actually have to go get hear the trainings. I mean, like, if we want to went to the trainings, sure, you're going to trainings. But the bottom line is, is got to implement it. We all agree that if you're going to put money back in reserve for something like that for repairs of buildings or structures, or if you're going to put it into some type of reserve for some uh, for vehicles or whatever you're going to do. You find control it, do it. And stop talking about it. Put the money back, budget for it. We talked about it, we just did a budget. Well, respect, I'm not disagreeing with but you. But we talked about this six months ago. I know, and I've been talking to putting peace on the softball fields for four years. Like, you I'm agreeing with what you're that. saying. Okay, we're talking about but I'm saying I'm agreeing with what we're saying, but we never we don't do it. How much money are losing off those ball fields? Yeah, really, millions, millions of dollars. Millions. I don't know. It's funny, Jim, because we don't mind paying the electrical fees on those lights all the time. It'd be millions of dollars. Just think that. I don't. I never said millions of dollars. Everything, every little bit helps. But if you want to put money back, then put money back. I'm agreeing. Yeah, somebody traffic stops, you guys make it. Uh, stop signs till four fifty. You mentioned a uh, month's time. In a month time for traffic stops. No, no. Stop signs. Stop sign violations? Yeah. And you have to go back and look at the data. Okay. I can get that. Done. <laughs> well, well then, so <laughs> hey, every little bit helps, Councilman Nice. That's so true. Every, hey, I'm just trying. I know you're trying to do your best. I am. I, I mean, that's all we're trying to do here. I'm just trying to make sure the people who don't actually use them have to pay for them. But I guess it's okay. And back to the fee schedule, that's going to be you guys for figuring that out in the budget meeting. So, Mayor, I'm sorry. Yes, sir, go ahead. And Joel, maybe this is a question for you, um, but we have discussed the uh, new insurance plan for employees, and it's creating an HRA that we're going to have to put money into, but I don't know that we've actually, to Jerome's point, discussed putting the account. We did. We did. Oh, the, the account together? We just kept, like, like a bank account or a yeah. line item. I don't know that we voted to create a new account to hold that money. Did I hear that right? Yes. Well, I think yes. I could, I could hear half what you were saying. It wouldn't be a bad idea to implement that. Exactly. Um, but I don't know that you can do that tonight because it's not on the agenda. Well, we can just do it. You know, we, we don't have the budget passed. So right. We can right. do it next, next meeting, meeting, meeting at the following. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Create this account. Yeah, it's probably a good idea to create that account. All right. Thank you. All right. So we have a few announcements. We are accepting letters. Like, I said we already went over that in the budget. I mean, unless he wants to talk about it. I won't bring up the softball field. It's a touchy subject. Hey, but the dope, the money we made on that beach party in the river, we really had money. Yeah, yeah. Hey, at least it brought people to town and supported our local businesses. Those yeah, ball fields, yeah. they bring people to town all the time. Well, yeah, but... And they don't even ball. drink. Huh? McDonald's is going to have a field day. Yeah, yeah. I know. What are the, I, what, I just have a quick question. So the yeah, people who put those tournaments on, how much are they making? I have no idea. I'll check it out though. I wish you wait. Did you bring us back the reports? How much money did they collect? How much money did you make off the news party? I don't know. I have to, I have to check the data with Kevin. Okay. Or, or, or as you say, Councilman Ister, I'll plead the fifth. I didn't plead the fifth. Okay, you did the one time. Exactly. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use your line. I'm going to plead the fifth. But I'll get you the numbers up from Kevin. I'll tell you what, we try to hide. I'll use that on you now. Listen, I'm not hiding nothing. I'll, it's all public knowledge right down in the Treasury Department of the account. So if you're concerned, you can write to know it. I'll get you the information. I won't deny it. I already have it. Okay, that's good. We can't deny that, just so everybody knows we can't deny that. I know, that was, that was a All right, moving on. Letters of interest, Civil Service Board, three-year term. Housing Authority, five-year term. Redevelopment Authority, a five-year term. Uh, zoning Hearing Board, two for a three-year term. Planning Commission, three for a four-year term. Municipal Authority, two for a five-year term. HARB, 
uh, two for a four-year term registered architect, uh, uh, recreation board, a four-year term, the Board of Appeals, a four-year term, and Shade Tree, Shade Tree Commission, three-year term. Uh, the Sunbury Sand and Parade and Tree Lighting will take place in Cameron Park on November 29th at 5 p.m. Uh, Northumberland County Historical Society Open House is December 4th from 1 to 7. Uh, Cereal with Santa and How the Grinch Stole Christmas at the Albright Center on December 7th at 9 a.m. Century Friendly Santa at the Santa House on December 8th at excuse me, yeah, December 8th at 10 a.m. Ugly Sorter Contest at the uh, Ice Skating Rink on December 29th at 4 p.m. Uh, New Year's Eve celebration at the <coughs> Ice Rink in Cameron Park are on December 31st. Uh, New Year, uh, the next City Council meeting will be November 25th at 6.15. Now, is there any public comment at this time? Please say your name, ma'am. Uh, Randy Buner, and this is um, this is a, in regards to a problem that I've been encountering several times uh, at Fourth and Market Street. When you're going this direction, <laughs> south. <laughs> when you're going, yeah, south. Um, at the light, people take it upon themselves to make a turning lane to turn right, and. If someone else is turning right, they go right up there, and if somebody else is turning right, it's, gonna, it, it, it's a disaster. A week and a half ago, I was in that lane, the, the, the proper lane, and somebody pulled up. I was the second person in, in lane there, and she wasn't turning right. She was just button right in front of me to go straight. That is a disaster waiting to happen. I don't know if you can mark that somehow, if it can be. I mean, the parking spaces are not, the lines aren't real clear, but it's not a turning lane. And there's no, you know, so it, it's just, it's a, it's a problem. And I can just see something that happen. It's, it's, a a it's all at all the intersections, right? It's a, it's a good, it's a, it's a good point that you bring up. And like, what I would love to do is maybe meet with uh, Councilman Iser and Steve. Maybe we can put some lines that basically that we can do that. We'll see. We'll see. I kind of get we'll see. When actually, Travis, Remember, DPW's under staff. When, when uh, could not be done, sixty-one quarter, they actually took the dense stoles off of parking lot. Marcus Street for that purpose so that car can stagger over to the right to make that loop and let the two traffic go through. Um, I don't know. The problem is, is like, it, it, Total 75 is actually easy, actually, you won't. And Total yeah. 75, you can't, if there's a vehicle going that way, like, they go out around. Because what could happen at the last minute, like, if right, she had an emergency, she had to go right, then guess who's the fault? So you'd have to make a legal turn. Turn right. I mean, mm -hmm. it, it, it is. A, it's a valid. It's a valid. There's no question. If you're gonna move out around. You better pay attention. Right. Yes. It happens a lot. Yeah. Yeah. It's in your foot. Going on to what Randy was talking about. There's two other intersections that are. Huh, I don't understand. One is South Second to Chestnut. How long the light stays going? Because it turns red, it turns green, and two cars go through, and all of a sudden it's turning red again, and there's no traffic coming on Chestnut. That one, and also Fourth of Arch, Fourth of Arch, if you're on Arch Street, that red light changes and it does not stay. So is 11. So is 11. Did you change them? Did we better talk to Steve. Yeah, it would, it would be a calibration type thing. Maybe we could look at maybe the sensors are getting outdated. You can also look at the I know at Reagan and Fourth, they pick up if somebody's churning. There's no way they would turn. You have to wait for another rotation head north. Yeah, so we'll put it in question of all right. But the one, you know, the Arch Street one, Fourth and Arch, and the South Second and Chestnut, you know, they're. They don't stay. They don't stay. You can get one or two cars through. So can, we get, can, we, can you note the Steve to check out? All, you said all the red lights. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, all the one. I mean, we listed all the red lights. I'll ask him when they were last calibrated and checked. Can we get a 
be recalibrated. Like what they're calibrating. Now, remember, they don't they have starter manpower right now, so put on the list. Paul Steve is going to talk about the You can't because he's not going to have a CBL to do that. But the uh, heading south of secondary is kind of a challenge. That was always a shorter because Boy, traffic hit right. your fire here on south side. I understand that. I think it needs a But I think my ease with it is that it changes really quick, but there's nothing coming. Yeah, there's, it's, it's like it's on a timer, oh, but not on a timer. Probably on a timer because it's the trucking room. <laughs> if I had to guess, that's probably yeah. why they did it. I know. Sure. Yeah. 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 yeah, but there's no car coming, so it's something. All right, well, we'll get Steve to check out all the lights in between, his, in between them driving around. All right, any other pub public comment at this time? I, I would just like this. <laughs> <laughs> I would just like number one, is there any veterans in the room? Oh. Okay. I'd just like to say thank you to thank you. You guys for, for everything that you guys do. Any other public comment at this time? I turned this meeting. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>